Hey guys, it's Stephanie with the Glam Girl Boss. I'm so excited. I'm gonna bring you guys a new look today with the Anastasia Renaissance palette. I have gifted this to some people in my life this Christmas and I wanted to show them how to use this as well as you. So we've got some beautiful shades that I thought would be fun to work with. Um, it's a great New Year's look. You could use it for Valentine's, date night, all the way around. I'm on my second palette, which is super rare for me to get through, whoa, for me to go through eyeshadows. Um, and so I really love it. It's a staple in my um, makeup palettes, cabinet, whatever you wanna call it. So anyways, if you wanna see how I got this look, chit chat and get ready with me. It's been forever since I sat down to film a video. Don't forget to press the notification bell if I can remember how to say it. Don't forget to subscribe. Go over to my blog, theglamgirlboss.com and you'll get to see more of my crazy life, the fashion, productivity tips, all that good stuff. So stay tuned and enjoy. Oh my gosh, today is the 23rd of December. By the time I get this up, it's probably going to be after Christmas, but I have missed filming and doing anything fun like this. It's been a crazy busy year. It's all great stuff, but oh my gosh. Okay, so to start with primers, I already put my primer on because it's going to here a little bit ago, but if you haven't seen any of my other videos, um, I'm probably going to butcher the name of this, but Guerlain, Guerlain, this is the primer I use all over my face just a little bit. And then I use the Tarte Clean Slate Timeless Smoothing Primer, kind of in these T-zone areas, um, anywhere where, where I want to kind of fill in some pores. I don't put it all over my face. Disclaimer, just like in all of my videos, I have three babies that are fur babies that are walking around. Two are engrossed in bones right now, and one is just randomly walking. So you're going to hear noises every once in a while. You may hear us uh, uh, every once in a while, but otherwise they're going to be pretty good. So... Anyways, so what we're going to start with, with my foundation, I like to mix them. I'm using a couple new ones. Um, I still am using my Urban Decay All Nighter. Um, I'm not really spray tanned right now, so I'm going to use the 5.0 shade, but I do like to mix my foundations. And I'm going to mix it with the Estee Lauder Double Wear, and I'm wearing shade 2N1, which is also Desert Beige. And this is the best ever. And I, when I first discovered this earlier this summer, I was like, I have to do a video, and then life happened, and I haven't been able to. But I've been wearing this ever since, and it's awesome. And I pair it with the Peach Perfect Setting Powder by Too Faced. This is supposed to be like, I think, a 14-hour wear which is why it does so well, it's mattifying. It's always sold out no matter when I go get it, so I just order it online before I'm out so that I don't have to worry about it. And I'm wearing the shade Light Beige. I have this same setup in a couple of shades darker when I'm spray tanned. And I'm gonna go spray tan tonight since it's the holidays and we're about to go do some fun stuff. So I'm gonna take a squirt of my Urban Decay All Nighter. I wear my All Nighter as a base with everything just because I prefer a more full coverage foundation. I have freckles and a lot of other fun stuff on my skin that I just kind of want to hide when I wear my makeup. It's part of that. And what I do is part of my skincare routine, which if y'all want to know more about that, let me know. I use like a face oil. So I, you know, it does look like a lot of foundation and it's part of that. This is actually pretty hydrating though. I really like this a lot. Um, I'm going to take my damp beauty blender. I'm going to spray it with my MAC Fix Plus. This is the coconut scent, but you can use whatever scent or just the regular if you like. And then kind of mix all that in. And honestly, when I mix my foundations, I feel like the pressure's off on trying to find the perfect shade, if you know what I mean. I'm just gonna start working this in. So how have y'all been? Oh my gosh, literally it's been like April since I filmed anything. I mean, I've posted stuff on the blog and on Instagram and all that fun stuff. So I've definitely been around, but I just haven't been available for filming and editing because work's been crazy busy. So, Anyways, how are y'all? It's the day before Christmas Eve, so it's my husband's birthday. He actually has to work today. So he's at work. We celebrated basically this whole month. It's kind of like the month of birthdays in our family. And then, um, of course, we'll have Christmas Eve and Christmas, and we're going to the lake for Christmas just to hang out. So we'll hang out with my parents and sisters and family on Christmas Eve. Get a little bit more. And then um, we're gonna go kick it with the pups in Broken Bow for a couple of days, which is our happy place. We have a lot up there and we'll eventually build a cabin and um, just chill. I don't know if I'll unplug. I have some stuff I wanna work on for next year for the vlog and for work. But um, yeah, so 
So I have this lovely little mole right here. So I do kind of cover it up a little bit. And to kind of make sure my face and neck match each other before I started filming, I went ahead and did this. This guy is going to be your best friend. It's called Body Blur by Le Vita Liberata. I do the color medium or latte. This is like makeup for your skin, but it's wonderful. And I just apply it with my little mitt that I got. Um, I got it off Amazon, but this is great. You can get it at Ulta. You can get it online. I always keep it back up. I take it on vacation with me. It's just great if you want a quick bounce of color, but you're not like totally spray tanned. Okay, so now I'm not done with the foundation, but I'm going to just take this flat kabuki brush and just kind of go through the edges of my nose where the beauty blender is not going to get and kind of up here on my hairline. That way everything's nice and blended. And then I do the same thing on my neck because... I don't know if my neck's just drier than the rest of my face, but sometimes the makeup needs, I don't want it to clump up or be freaking in the car mirror. Has you ever had that happen? Where you're like, oh, wonderful. So try to get that all blended out. And then I'm gonna take what's left of this foundation. This, the reason I set it with my MAC Fix Plus is because I just feel like the foundation stays way longer. So if I do my makeup in the morning, and if I go to the gym, which I'm going to be doing today, even if I sweat, it doesn't really move. I mean, it might a little bit, but if like we've had a lot of events here lately in the evening where a lot of times in years past, you know, I would get ready, go to work or whatever for the day and then go to an event. And it was like, oh, crap, I got to redo my makeup just because it doesn't look fresh anymore. It doesn't look good anymore. Nope, not anymore. So basically all I had to do before some of these events was maybe do a touch of powder if I was getting a little shiny, which even that really wasn't happening. And then update my lipstick. And really that was it. If I wanted to add a bit of a smokier eye, I did that. But I'm going to show you guys some stuff today of how I do my eyeshadow and my eyeliner and stuff that helps. Okay, so we're done with foundation. Let's take a quick break. Let's look at my new coffee mug. Boom! It was a Christmas present from Leroy. I got it before Christmas. And I got him one that says Dog Dad, even though he doesn't drink coffee. So that was kind of fun. It was blue. Okay, so I'm going to take the tried and true and loved Tarte Shape Tape. This is the best concealer ever. If you've never used it, give it a whirl. Um, I can show you some techniques if you feel like you've used concealer in the past, but it creases. I totally have you, girl. It said it to me too. So what I do is I just do a little under the eyes, a little up here for highlight. That's really why I do it like that. You don't have to do that. I go ahead and smash, spray a little bit more of my MAC Fix Plus, and I go to town. I specifically let the concealer under my eyes sit for a little bit longer because I really want that to be the brightest part. These other parts are just kind of a nice to have. And if I'm in a hurry, I don't always do this. I will tell you when I'm more spray tan, this part makes a lot more of a difference because my face is darker and it does give me a little bit more depth. I'm not really spray tanned at all right now. Okay, so now I'm gonna take another squirt and I'm gonna go ahead and go in. Now with the damp beauty blender, I go in with the point to get the little pieces of the little corners of my eye. And I just blend, blend, blend. I look up, because if you look up, the skin underneath your eye is stretched to where it doesn't have any lines. If I look down, I have more lines. Do you see that? If I look up, I don't have as many lines because of the way the skin works. So I'm just gonna go ahead and look up so that as I'm tapping this into my skin, it has the least amount of chance of creasing. If it helps, you can make this wonderful face where you kind of go with your mouth and that'll pull the skin down as well. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And the other thing I like to make sure of is to make sure your beauty blender is damp, like not dry damp 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 you know it doesn't have to be soaking wet i always take like a washcloth and squeeze out the excess from my damp beauty blender after i run under the sink but i've noticed that the days where my beauty blender is more on the dry side my i don't feel like my makeup does as well so it does need i think a little bit of moisture when you're tapping it in 
I don't mind if some of my concealer gets on my eyelid. If you do, then maybe be a little bit more careful about how much you put on underneath your eye. It doesn't bother me because I frankly use it as an eyeshadow base or primer because I don't take the time usually on a day, normal days to do a uh, eyeshadow primer. Okay, so that's done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, Too Faced Peach Perfect Powder. Now, if you buy nothing else but you've never tried this powder, I highly recommend this because I feel like this made a huge difference in my concealer not creasing. And I had seen it on videos and was like, oh my gosh, I have 10 million types of powder. I've already tried all these other ones. Honestly, I've been using this for almost a year and I haven't even gotten at my Laura Mercier or what did I even use before? Oh, I had another Too Faced one. That's what I had. I had a, another Too Faced one, the Ethereal powder, however you say that. And I was like, oh, I don't need this one. It's by Too Faced. Totally different formula. And it actually tastes good. So if you get it in your mouth, it's okay. So I'm going to do a little bit in the cap, my damp beauty blender. I'm not going to bake. Baking is a technique when you take your beauty blender, you take your powder, it's really damp. You put a heavy coat of powder on your face. You let it set. I tend to look super dry and super old when I do that. I don't need that to happen. So, but I still take this a little bit, just do it light and just let it blend in. I just want to make sure I get it in certain places. That's really why I do it like this versus just starting out with the brush. Cause I know I specifically want it underneath my eyes. I specifically want it around my nose cause that's where I get oily. And then it's super light. So I'm not baking and not letting it set, I'm not doing a huge thick coat. I'm just gonna take a powder brush, use the rest, swirl it around, tap, 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 and then apply it lightly like I normally would. But that way I know for sure I have it in the places I want because if you can get your concealer to set under your eyes without increasing, better chance it'll stay during the day. And I still do my neck too because I put foundation there, so I want all that to stay put. All right, so now that that's all done, we're gonna bronze up. So I do like to use, I use two different bronzers as well. I use, this is a great, Butter Bronzer by Physicians Formula and Laguna by NARS. These are two pretty well-known bronzers. Um, you can get the Butter Bronzer anywhere. It's a really great buy. It's like 12 bucks, I think, at Target or Ulta. And I just mix them, I just do this a little bit. The reason um, I don't just use that though is because it's kind of a light color for me and if I bronze I want to have more warmth and so that's why I mix it with the NARS Laguna. The NARS Laguna to me by itself it's probably a little dark unless I'm super sun-kissed you know blah blah blah. I just have really fair skin so I don't want it to look too off if you will. So that's why I tend to mix them. If you are lighter skinned or if you aren't doing wanting as warm of a look, you could just stick with the butter bronzer by itself. So I just like to warm everything up. I feel like I just look healthier with a little bit of tan glow. All right, and then I'm gonna contour a little bit. Don't let contouring scare you. When I used to watch the videos on contouring, um, contouring, it was a lot of cream. Everyone was using the creams and it looked really heavy and I tried that and I did it and it was fine but it just wasn't realistic for every day. I like to do my makeup pretty fast but I like to know that it's going to look good and stay. Um, and so sometimes the cream just didn't work. I've got it down to pretty much a science. The Kat Von D palette is really nice. Um, admittedly, I only really use the bottom row. I don't really use the top powders. Um, nothing against it. I just don't play in that. I used to use this a lot but ever since I got the Too Faced Peach Perfect. I don't use it. Um, so anyways, I usually use this middle one and go between these two. If I'm really tan, sometimes I'll use this dark one just to give me a little bit more um, contour. And I start right here. And this is her brush, which I love. And I just use the, the angled in. And I just do like this. So you really want to get it to the back by your ear because, you know, your face has natural hollows to it. And if it doesn't, we want to make it look like it does because that means that we have a little bit of contouring, we have a little bit of depth, a little bit of shape. That's all makeup really is, is it's just illusions and shape and textures. 
okay? So I'm gonna go back into these shades, just do a little bit on the temples. I wear my hair up, kind of in like this faux hawk look. So my forehead is always on display. And then I do a little bit on either side of my nose. I don't feel like I have that big of a nose per se, so I don't like to do that much because I don't have a lot to work with right here. Um, I love a good upper lip. I do this. So see how nor like naturally you have these shadows that come. Hang on, Charlie Bear's wanting it. Give me one second. Um, so we've got the contouring done. What is it, baby? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come You want to say hi to everyone? And then I'm going to go into just a really easy blush. This is by Benefit. I keep wanting to say Hula. It's by Benefit. It's the Galiforna. Galiforna. Um, it's just a super easy peach. I just have this, uh, what is this? It Brushes by Ulta, just an angled blush brush. I just tap it in, tap a little excess off. I just stamp it. I just stamp it back and forth where I want it. I don't do this whole like we used to do in back in the day. Okay, so I just do a little bit here. If you can tell, like, I'm pretty quick with my makeup. Like, I don't like to mess around. I want to know it looks good. When I go to the gym, I have a bag already packed with all my makeup um, so that it's easy. I know that, that everything works well together. Okay, and last but not least, it makes a huge difference. It's going to be highlight. So you guys, if you watched any of my videos, sorry, my nose issues, you've seen me. The Laura Geller um, Gilded Honey is great. I have allergies, so sometimes I get like with these metallics, they make my skin itch, especially in Dallas where sometimes it gets really humid. The minerals will move around, so this doesn't really do that to me. So I like to do a little bit on my lip, and I know sometimes I'll get foundation on my lips. I just let it go. Like, it's just not that big of a deal. So I do a little on my upper lip. I do a little underneath each eye, so like the top of my cheekbone. I do a little on the bridge of my nose, and then I do a little above each eyebrow where the arch would kind of be. And then sometimes I'll even do like right here underneath my eyebrow, just because that's a nice highlight anyway. We can always get that with eyeshadow, but sometimes it's just a little more subtle with this bigger brush. And now that all that's done, so basically all the powders are done on my face, except for my eyes. But as far as the face makeup, so then what I'm gonna do, so we got the Matte Fix Plus Regular, coconut flavor, but it's their regular formula. Then we have the Matte Fix Plus, and this is the gold light formula. So it's gonna have like little flecks of gold, I started using this when it came out. I feel like it came out earlier this summer. I haven't used the rose gold one yet, but I love the gold. I always have this on hand along with the normal one. So I always put this on at least for to finish. Sometimes I'll use it halfway through, like when I'm doing my foundation, like I did when I used this. But I always use this to finish. I feel like that's after my highlight. So I'm just going to squirt it on. I'm going to look kind of crazy for a second. And then I'm going to use my beauty blender to just kind of tap everything in and let it all melt together. Okay, ready? And I'm going to take the flat end of this beauty blender. I'm just going to tap lightly and quickly. And again, I'm going to make that lovely face to so get all the creases out because we want everything to melt together. All the little hairs on your face to just lay down, all the powder from the makeup to just melt together. This is like my favorite part. Any creases that your eyes have from using the concealer on them. All right. Okay. So now that we're done with all of that, all the face, we're gonna switch to eyes. Before we switch to eyes though, I'm gonna put on a lip primer just to kind of be working while I talk. This is brand new to me. It's by Sarah Happ. She is amazing. I listened to a podcast with her talking about how she started her business and I was really inspired and I wanted to buy some of her stuff. Uh, I believe Nordstrom's is not carrying her, but this is the lip expert. And you wanna try some too, Charlie? Come here. Oh, let's say hello, hello, hello. Okay, so this is um, the Lip Expert by Sarah Happ. And basically, this is her primer. 
Plump and prime. No, you can't get down. You want down? Okay. And then it just says to put it on your lips as a primer. Technically, you could probably wear it by itself, but we're not going to. And we're just going to let it do its thing. Wow. Make your eyes. All right, I think it's coffee break time. Okay, so now with brows, we're gonna use the Anastasia Brow Definer in medium brown. I don't do a whole lot with my brows in the sense of overlining them or anything. I just like to make sure they're tweezed, trimmed, and then this really makes it an easy process. So tweezing, I just go through, I don't know, once, twice a month and tweeze them. There are times when there's gonna be little hairs there and I honestly will just put a little bit more concealer on or foundation over the eyebrow while I'm doing using my beauty blender and it'll cover up those hairs. It's no big deal. Um, the other thing I do is when I do tweeze them, go through all that, and then I'll comb up my eyebrows um, with a really small comb. And then while I have the comb still running through them, I'll take some really small scissors and I'll cut the hair. That way they just stay really groomed looking. I don't have a great like shape per se. Like I don't have a long eyebrow. So I, that's what I like to draw in a bit just so that it extends out my eye. And then I'll do the same thing over here. Just fill them in a bit. I don't use a crazy dark liner or color to fill them in. I don't really want it, my brows to be noticed, if you will. Like I don't want it to be like, brows, oh, then her face. I'd rather that be my lashes. <laughs> so I just kind of like my brows to look natural, but I'll tell you, you know, there's some people out there that have some awesome brows and that's great, but I just don't feel like that's one of the features that are best to claw on my face. So this is kind of the approach I take. And you, usually you'll have one that's better than the other. I feel like this one's better. This one's it's a little messy through here. It's like, I probably need to tweeze it up a little bit more. All right, so once I'm done with that, I wanna kind of set that. I just use some, I have some clear mascara. Clear, well, it's not mascara, it's brow gel. So it's, this is by CoverGirl. You can get them in a lot of different brands. Just to kind of set that all down. By now, your eyelids have had a chance to dry, which is why I do this step like this. So that from when we just set everything to where when we're about to put our um, eye makeup on, everything can go. Now, disclaimer, my brushes aren't very clean. That's something I need to do before the first of the year. Um, so I'm going to show you kind of, I can't remember if I've already done this in a video, but if not, um, you'll see it for the first time. And if I have, you'll get to see it again and get more brush. Okay, so basically I have the MAC Feline is the color uh, coal eyeliner and this is what I've been doing like every single day for literally the past six or seven months. It's the bomb. So I like to line the inner corner and inner waterline of my eye. So I, I know I don't have any eyeshadow on yet. This is totally intentional. So I'm going to do that first. I'm not going to go real deep into the corner. I'm just going to get this the waterline, which is the line that's underneath your eyelid and closest to your eye that you see. So see the difference in my eyes? You can see this has a little bit more depth to it than this one, and that's all I did. But that's not what we're gonna do only. And then I'm gonna take a little bit down, just a little bit, just like literally. Stop like right here, and I'll show you why here in a minute. As you do this, your eyes are gonna may start to water because you are in that water line, okay? And then I'm gonna take and extend up just a little bit. So here's what I'm gonna show you. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Actually, I'll do it on one eye first and you see the difference. I feel like I have kind of like a hooded eye. I don't have like a downturn eye, but I don't have like that beautiful, whew, I can do this great lid and you see it all necessarily. Some days yes, some days no. Well, what I was doing with my winged eyeliner is I was doing this wing with eyeliner, but it was looking harsh and it was had this weird bubble thing when I would close my eye and I was like, this isn't working, what's the deal? So one day I just started doing this. So I'm gonna use this stiff brush and I'm just gonna work back and forth in an upward motion at an angle. Cause that's my biggest issue, right? Is you put eyeshadow on and we all wanna go this way, this way, this way. We want a sweeping look though. And I got a video where I used Scotch tape doing that. Uh, I've got a video where I've used a brush like this and we've done this, but this is another technique which I honestly find a little easier and a little bit, it saves me a little bit more time. 
And we're just going to go up. Now, I know right now it looks like, holy crap, she's going way up there too. She's going to meet her eyebrow. It's cool. We're good. And this is why I didn't want to put too much on the lower lash line because we can always add more. But as your eyes start to kind of water, and I have my eye closed right now. But as your eye starts to water a bit, this will spread out even more. And then we're going to do kind of a, it'll, it'll get you a pretty thick layer. But because it's the cold eyeliner, it's not like crazy harsh, which is what I love. Because I felt like my eyes were getting like, they were nice, but it was getting too harsh. So you're essentially creating like a coal winged eyeline. Okay, so see how that's going to go up? Now I know it looks heavy right here right now. I'm going to just work with one eye at a time. That way you can see. The other thing I think really happens is, because we're, we're about to start with our um, uh, eyeshadow. And if you can hear Max, he's chewing on a bone right beside the microphone. By the way, um, we're going to start using this palette right here. So the one thing I think that happens is with the winged eyeliner like this, this eyeliner has like waxes and stuff in it. I don't know all the materials, but let's be real. It, you, it, this is basically creating a barrier. So I think the reason I like it so much is it's creating a barrier and it's also giving me a guide visually. Okay, so we're going to start in the Anastasia palette. Our base coat, we're just going to do the Tempesta, which is the top right shade. And we're just going to tap it and we're just going to kind of wiggle it around in circles over the crease. Just kind of get it in there. I move my head back and forth versus using, wiggling my arm too much. And this is already kind of my guide. Like there's no need to go all the way down because we don't need to. Then I'm going to start kind of with some color. Golden ochre is loved, well loved because it's a good color. And just kind of go in here and build up some shades. Now the key with eyeshadow is shading, 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 blending, blending, blending. So if you don't have a lot of time, just use some shades that blend together and go. Or don't put anything on. But don't try to use shades and not blend them because then you're not going to like the look and then you're going to feel like you can't do it. A lot of it is just having to do with to have a little bit more time involved. Okay, now the one thing I am being cautious of is not going up too, too high. Like, this is a bigger brush. It's fluffy. You can see that there's color here. But this very top part, this area that I put the highlight on earlier, that's kind of acting as a barrier as well. So, I can kind of make sure I'm placing my shadow in the right place. Now, when you're working with darker colors, I recommend going to a little bit smaller brush because then you can really control where we're going with things. So, next we're going to start with Venetian Red. Tap, tap, tap. If it has some kickback, which is where the um, powder starts to come up, just blow it off. Tap it off so we don't get too much on. And where our crease is, like right here, close your eye. We're just gonna, bam, see where your eye, and we're just gonna wiggle it. Okay. Just kind of wiggle it in there. We can blend it here in a second. But we just want to get the color on there and know where the color placement needs to be. It's kind of like when we contoured earlier. The darker color gets in the crease, it adds some depth and definition. Okay, add a little bit more. Phoenician red. And I'm just going in circles. Now I know where the placement needs to be. I'm just kind of going in a circular motion. I wiggle my head or move my head more versus moving my arm. If you're wondering why. Oh, wow. Two. Okay, go back here. Throw in some golden ochre and just kind of blend. Yeah, I'm doing a new one. Okay, so for some reason my camera stopped halfway through when I was trying to do this eye. So we're going to go ahead and just do this eye and you can see how I do it again. Love technology. Okay, so we're going to take the eyeliner. Do what we did on the first eye.
And this eye always seems like, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because I'm right-handed and I'm not, it's just a little less fluid. It just seems like I have to work a little bit harder to get it the way I want it to. So, it is what it is. Does that look up a little bit when I'm doing the bottom? So I started a new workout program, so I finally finished the ADD Obsession eight months after I started it, but hey, it's all good. So um, I'm doing a new one, it's called Lift 40, it's by Beachbody as well, which I just, I love their stuff, because I can stream it on my phone, it's super cheap, and I feel like it's really quality workouts. So um, now I'm doing lifting heavy, like building up the muscle, I don't know if you can see or not can see getting these like peaks here um doing hip abs and weights pretty much every day to do the workout it's four days a week which is wonderful and then on the days that i'm off usually i'll pop in like one or two of the 80 day obsession workouts but the thing with 80 day obsession i love it it did great things for my butt my legs all that every workout was like 50 to 60 minutes and there's just some days where mentally i don't have that or time wise i just don't um, and I know I've lived 40, like everyone's going to be between 30 to 40 minutes. And for me, I don't know, sometimes that 20 minutes is a big deal, especially if I'm trying to also walk the dogs. So it was just harder for me to stay committed to it, but I'm super glad and proud of myself that I finally finished it, even though it didn't take me 80 days, it took me eight months. But there were days that I would do other workouts when I was doing that, so I was still active, but I was just feeling kind of like a loser because it took me so long. Um, all right, so... Let's start back with this palette and I'll check the camera to make sure it doesn't turn off. So this is kind of what we're working with if you want to compare the two. So because of the liner, like admittedly, the looks are going to be a little bit more purple versus just pink and red, which I'm kind of okay with because um, I don't mind the colors. So I'm going to start with Tempera, which is the top right, and we're just going to do the base coat like we did on the other side. And then we're going to go back into the Golden Ochre. So what are your holiday goals for the year that you're making now? What are mine if we're on the subject of fitness? Um, is, take the smaller brush. We're gonna go on Venetian red into our crease. Is, I'm trying to figure out, and I'm being very thoughtful about it, whether I want to train for a half marathon or not. And the reason I'm being intentional is because I've tried it before and I wasn't doing it because of the reasons I wanted to, I was just trying to like say I was doing it, I think. And it didn't stick. And I don't want it to be like one of those things. Like I want it to be something I do because I want to do it. And if I don't, that's okay too. Like it needs to be a goal that I set for myself versus thinking, oh, it's what I'm supposed to do. And I think that's where I'm trying to work on this year is not worrying about what I'm supposed to do. I mean, like there's things you have to do and supposed to do in life, right? But I'm supposed to do based on where I'm at in life or where I'm at in my journey or my fitness journey or whatever. All right, so we're gonna go into red ochre and Venetian red and just kind of mix those around here in the crease and lower along this inner corner. I'm sorry, outer corner. Following the line of the eyeliner, which is why I love it because I feel like it creates a nice barrier here. So yeah, so that's kind of what I'm being thoughtful about. Um, we're gonna be doing our dream boards. Um, usually New Year's Eve we stay in and I will take all the photos from the year prior and I'll go onto like Shutterfly or something. <sighs> I think it was Shutterfly last year, I can't remember. And I'll do like a photo calendar and that calendar we put usually like on the door of our pantry or somewhere we can see it. And it reminds us of the year because there's so many times where we don't print the pictures and we have such a full year of stuff that we just kind of forget about. So I'm going between Venetian Red and Love Letter. So between these two. Can y'all see that? So between Venetian Red and Love Letter. Um, so that's what usually I do New Year's Eve. We get like summer sausage and cheese and just some desserts and just kind of hang out. Leroy and I watch whatever, football, movies, Gold Rush, <laughs> whatever's on TV that we want to watch. And um, just kind of have a night in with the dogs. And then we do our dream board. So either we'll do our dream board New Year's Eve night or New Year's uh, day. 
And basically, we just go get a big poster board, and then we go get some magazines. Or Actually, I just kind of keep some magazines that come in during the season so that we can have those. And we'll go get some more of things we're interested in or want to accomplish. And honestly, guys, I think I've talked about dream boards before. It's huge. It totally changed our life. From the standpoint of what you think about really does expand and what you put out in the universe and what you just decide that you're intentional about. It's a really, it's, it's awesome. Again, I'm just mixing those colors. Deepen it up as much as you feel comfortable with or want. Um, you have to remember, I'm going to be putting lashes on here in a little bit, and that usually helps tone it down. So it may look a little strong right now on the colors, but one, I love it, so it's all good. And then two, it's going to be toned down a bit. Um, and then again, I'm putting this brush kind of in the golden ochre, so it's a neutral that's being spread around when I'm blending this out. So I'm going to look at between the two eyes. This one looks like it needs to be deepened up a bit. So I'm going to take my brush again. I'm going to go into an antique bronze and just focus on this outer corner. There. And then I'm going to blend it one more time. So there's days where I don't have time to spend doing this and that's totally okay, but I wouldn't want to do a look like this if I didn't have the time to invest, which is not most days to be totally honest with you. All right, so I'm going to take my smaller little pencil brush and I'm going to go back and forth between Vermeer and Primavera. So Primavera is this really pretty gold color and Vermeer is a little bit cooler toned. So I usually like to mix them so I have a mixture of the two on the inner corner of my eye. And I'm going to go up here to kind of the eyebrow area and kind of let that pop a little bit more from when we applied some highlight earlier. I'm going to use a clean brush now. and I'm just going to kind of blend this in the inner corner. Make sure it matches this eye. This, is, this looks a little stronger to me than this. So I'm going to add a little bit more. All right, so now we're gonna line the eyes. For some reason, the camera keeps turning off. I'm not really sure what's going on, but I lined this eye with the Smashbox um, Always On Liner. That's what it's called. Always On Liquid Eyeliner in black. And we're doing the same thing to this eye right now. What I've been doing here lately is I don't take the liner all the way over because I don't want this part of my eye to look heavy. So I've already got the eyeliner that goes up um, that we put on earlier. And I just want this to basically blend in my false lashes. So I'm going to um, grab my mascara. I use my the Essence Volume Stylus. This stuff's like cheap. It's like I think it's under five dollars at Ulta or Target. It's the purple bottle though, not the pink. The purple. I'm just gonna put that on real quick. Make sure you get your lower lashes. Gives you more definition. All right, the lash glue that I love, you guys have seen it before if you've seen my videos, it's the duo, the pink kind, because it's gonna dry black. I have two pairs of tweezers, one with a pointy end, and then the other, these are more of a flat tip, and these I um, use to take the glue off. I keep checking my laptop to make sure my camera hasn't shut off, so that's why I keep looking away. Let me grab my lashes. My babies will eat them if I keep them down. So I keep them in my bathroom on this little tray. And these are by House of Lashes. They do have some glue on them, but it's not terrible. So yes, for all those out there that ask me about my lashes, I wear them probably three weeks in a row, daily. I've been wearing lashes since August of 2014, and I haven't gone a day without wearing them. That's how much I love them. Um, for my upcoming 
screws, I'll probably opt to get them put on so that I don't have to deal with wearing a lot of eye makeup, but I can still look and feel good in my lashes. Um, so what we'll see. We went to St. Lucia, I did that and enjoyed it, but then we went to Maui last year, I didn't, and it was fine. So it just kind of depends how much time I have. But yeah, I absolutely love my lashes. Um, now that I've gotten to, used to doing it, like it's just not that big of a deal. So basically what I'm just doing now, if you just want to see the real, the real real, I just pick the glue off, be very gentle in the sense of you don't want to take off the band that holds all your eyelashes on. But this allows you to just get a clean application and admittedly I don't do it every time so sometimes there's a day or two's worth of glue that's okay just like clean my makeup brushes <laughs> all right so we're gonna do a little bit of glue if you've already seen this before feel free to fast forward I just know that there's some people out there that are curious I'm gonna let it set it down and just let it sit like 30 seconds to almost a minute the tackier the better you don't want it fresh you want it to be tacky and um I just like to kind of go through my steps. I don't think anything's changed since my last video. But if you are curious, um, you can either go into the rest of this library on YouTube. And there's a video that says like new makeup favorites plus how I apply my lashes. That video will walk you through it. Or you can go on my blog, theglamgirlboss.com and go to the beauty tab, beauty tutorials, and it'll be there if you want to find it that way. Um, so I'm going to let those chill for a little bit and set up. We've got our lip primer on. So next, I'm going to put on um, a lip liner real quick. It's by Charlotte Tilbury. It's called Lip Chi and Pillow Talk. We're just going to apply that. So again, what is this doing? This is contouring the lips. I have a little bit of that highlight on still, which is good. Sometimes if, if it's worn off, after I do my lip liner, I'll add some more. I don't do crazy colors usually with my lip liner. Like every once in a blue in, I'll wear red lipstick. But I want it to be some color, but nothing too drastic. So all three of my babies are over here. I got them as like faux fur padded like... I don't know, it wasn't very expensive. It was like $39 off Amazon. Compared to like some of them that were $200 for Tempur-Pedic, and they just love it. It's like this fur like throw that they just get to lay on. Okay, where is my, oh, okay, this is what I wanna show y'all. So this is the second thing with Sarah Hap. So this is part of the package I got that had lit, her lip scrub, which is what she's like famous for, which is what she created initially. I mean, gifting that this year to some people as well. And then this is called the Lip Slip. So this is like this gorgeous, and I'm gonna just apply it with my fingers so I don't get any color from that lip liner on here. This is in the flavor with vanilla gloss. So this is part of the holiday package. And it's just a gloss. But it's not sticky. And it tastes good. And it's just like, it's like glass. She calls it the lip slip. And it's just beautiful. It's just clear. Uh, and she's got their flavors. I've got her other one, the original, like the pink, in the actual jar. Honestly, now that I've tried this squeezy tube and the jar, I have to say I like the squeezy tube better for application just because the jar is like, I mean, if you have a nail, you're going to get it underneath your nail or if you use your knuckle, you can do it that way, which is how I use like the Vaseline I put on my lips, but just personal preference. So we got the lips going. Um, while we're letting our eyelashes set up still, I'm going to finish off the look. I've got this, this hourglass, I think it's the ambient lighting power or the luminous ambient lighting powder, luminous light. I'm just going to take a little face brush and I'm just going to dip this in and I'm just going to apply just lightly for a nice little finish. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's any other products that I've used lately that I haven't been able to tell y'all about. Um, definitely have a really nice skincare routine. If you want to know about that, let me know. I don't use any soap on my face. Um, so I don't dry my face out at all anymore. I've been used, doing that for about a year and a half or so. Um, 
I use a great, I have a great morning skincare routine. And it's, it's somewhat affordable. Like there was a time where I was spending so much money on skincare and getting so frustrated because there's so many options out there. I found a great eye, eye under eye cream that I love. Um, I use the same one for day and night. So yeah, if y'all want to hear about that, let me know. I'd love to share it with you. Okay, so now I'm going to take my eyelashes and I'm going to take the first one. I always start on my right side and I'm going to use a mirror that's a little closer. I can see this okay. And my goal is to get, oops, I got a little bit of glue on the tweezers so it's going to pull. The goal is to get the lash setting on your lashes. Does that make sense? Versus on your skin. So, okay, so once you do that, and you can kind of take your nail and go down so that if there's any lash. So basically I try to just rest the lashes, get them on your actual lashes first. That's like your first basic thing, okay? Then, and I cut the lashes. Okay, so just to back up, those weren't a new pair. If they were a new pair, I would have cut them a little bit so that they fit my eye. I don't have them go to the very inner corner of my eye because it bugs me. If I blink, they itch. I want to be able to wear them and not feel them, which is what I do every day. So I like to cut them, not too short, not too long, okay? like Goldilocks. And that's why I do the eyeliner because it helps blend it and we can always go back later and do more. Um, so that's pretty much on and I'm going to take my second one. And again, we're going to just set it on top of my lashes. Move it in place. And don't worry, the glue is not going to dry. Like you're going to be okay. It's not like hot glue or it dries super fast. And then once it's in place, okay, now I'm going to use my fingernail to kind of tuck it in and push it down to where it's literally at the base of my lashes and my eyelid. To where if I close my eyes right now, and I can do it here in a second for you. You might see a little band, but hopefully not. And if you do, then that's where the... Like, yeah, we want it to look as natural as possible, but let's be real. It's not natural. And that's okay. I like it to look good. Oh, I know. And then if you want like some extra assurances that this is like in place, carefully take your tweezers and just kind of pinch, but just be gentle because you don't want to pinch your eyelid. It's painful. You don't want to poke yourself either. So sometimes I'll go back with my eyeliner and I just want to make sure there's just some nice blended lines. So I'll close my eye and just kind of drag it. And guys, this goes faster over time. The first time you try something, it's going to take a little bit longer. It's going to be more frustrating. You're going to think, oh my gosh, how does she do this? Why does she do this? I don't have that much time. I've got four kids. i got to get to work. I get it. What I made myself do, because I love the look of eyelashes, I remember seeing Jenny McCarthy on Jenny and Donnie or whatever their show is called, thinking oh, she's and she's beautiful don't get me wrong but like I was like there's something like how does she get that look like it's not yeah she's pretty but there's something I'm missing like I didn't realize they literally wore lashes I thought it was just some bomb ass mascara okay and so finally when I recognized that hey she was get, probably having a little help I was like okay I can figure this out I'm going to commit, if I want that look, I'm going to commit to taking a little bit of time, like every single morning, I'm just going to do it. It's not going to be a question. 
Okay, so sometimes your glue will grab your lower lashes, and that's what happened there. So that's why I'm just kind of doing this, even though it looks really scary. So be really careful, okay? Don't do it on a cat or something that might bump you. You don't want to poke your eyeball out. So I committed to doing it, and then I slowly got better. And after about a week or two, I was like, oh my gosh, I got this. Like, it's like no problem. The difference it makes, the way it makes me feel, it's so worth it. So just try something new. If you like the results, just commit it to your doing it. If you have questions, let me know. Comment below. I'm happy to help. I will tell you that lashes are probably one of those things that like... It, it changed my life. <laughs> like, it's amazing the look that it gives your face. Um, there's so much with the eyes. You know, that's the first thing people usually see. And it's just, especially if they're not crazy over the top, it just is a really pretty way of accenting the windows to your soul. So anyways, this is the whole look. Um, I got to go do this mess of a hair and get it kind of in order. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. This is what it looks like with the eyes closed. Okay, so it's a little smoky, pinky, reddish purple using the Anastasia palette. I hope everyone that I gifted it to enjoys it this Christmas. I hope that if you're looking for a Valentine's Day look or something fun that adds a new color to your palette, this has been a nice video for you. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Press the notification bell. If you want to head over to theglamgirlboss.com, that's where you're going to meet me and all my other crazy things that I do. I have fashion posts. I have DIY stuff. I have productivity tips. Love to have you as part of the family. Sign up for my newsletter and y'all have a great day. Bye.